Hello, um, this is a short video to talk about how we can manage to do tomosynthesis guided biopsies if patients have very thin breasts. This is a patient I biopsied last week who had um, several groups of microcalcifications up here. And you can see that her breast thickness is only 22 millimeters. And generally speaking, below um, 30, 35 millimeters, you start needing to modify your technique. And why is this? Well, if your chamber is sticking out of the patient's skin, bad diagram here, if your skin's here, it is going to chomp out a big hole. And it can suck out a, a hole about the size of a dime if you sat and watched it do it. Um, so that can be pretty big. So that's obviously pretty suboptimal. The lack of a stroke margin can mean that when you deploy the needle, it might go through the other side of the breast, so injuring the other side of the breast, and also going into the receptor, which is kind of not a good thing to do. So what can we do? What are some of the potential solutions in patients with these um, thin breasts? Well, we can reduce the compression so they're not squeezed quite so hard. Um, that can cause its own problems, particularly if you have somebody with a, um, you're coming from a lateral medial approach where the breast is dependent because the breast might move. We can use the petite needle or what, a similar one. I'll show you those in a moment. We can use a lateral arm device. We can refer the patient instead for surgical excision, but no, we don't want to do that. We're radiologists. We can do everything. Um, or we can use a standoff pad, and I'm going to go through these. Let's talk first of all about changing your needle size. Most manufacturers have um, at least two different needle sizes, if not three. I'm going to show you the um, specs for the Hologic needle, um, but they're also kind of similar. So the standard needle has a chamber size of 20 millimeters, and then there's about eight millimeters at the end beyond the chamber before the tip, and you do have to account for that. Um, that's going to be within the breast. You don't want that sticking out the other side of the breast. Most manufacturers will have some kind of a smaller chamber needle. This is called the petite um, for Hologic, where it's a 12 millimeter chamber, but you still have eight millimeters beyond it. And then some will have a blunt ended needle with a small chamber. In this case, it has 12 millimeter chamber with four millimeters beyond it. Now, this has its own issues because that's because it's not sharp. Um, it's not going to go through the breast tissue very well, and it may just push the lesion away. So we can use an MR where we have a trocar that we put in, but generally speaking, we're not going to use that for a stereotactic biopsy. Now, what's the problem with these smaller needles? Um, I already talked about penetration for the blunt tip needle, but you're reducing the sample volume when you reduce the um, size of the chamber from 20 to 12 millimeters, you're reducing the sample volume to 60%. And so you have more likelihood of not getting what you're after. And I have to tell you that the majority of the biopsies, I don't get the abnormality first time are if I'm using the petite needle. So I don't like the petite needle and I try not to use it if I can ever avoid it. Now, one solution is using a lateral arm device, either as a standalone or an attachment to a conventional tomographic unit. Um, so our usual biopsies are going to be coming in perpendicular to the breast surface. Um, and in this case, the biopsy comes in the side. And so there's less problems with stroke margins and such like um, with thin breasts. And so these have been particularly marketed to thin breasts and they have their advantages, but you may or may not have one. So I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of a homegrown um, solution to this, which is super good. And, and I don't take any credit for this. The credit goes to Dr. Stephen Poplack, who is um, our section chief and my mentor who um, invented this little gadget along with our, our biomedical department. And it's just a little plexi um, glass kind of like a box with an open top. And in fact, the first one I think we had made from a compression paddle that they just made a big hole in. So here was our original one. It's two centimeters thick. So if you look from the side, this is two centimeters right here. There's a hole in the middle of it. That the breadth is the same size as the hole in the overlying paddle. You can see here. And then we just stick it down to the table um, lined up with the compression paddle. We've now gone all fancy schmancy and we have this newer one. Basically, it's the same thing, but it's 
welded onto a sheet of plexiglass that fits nicely over the table so we don't have to tape it down. But otherwise it's the same. And again, it's a two centimeter um, height. This is just the reflection that you're seeing here. So how does this help us? Well, we're getting into bad diagram time again here. Um, so here we have our image receptor. There is now an air gap effectively between the receptor and the breast by the use of the standoff pad. And the breast tissue will bulge through this gap as it normally does also bulge through the biopsy paddle. And you've now got a much thicker breast. So while your breast here might be only two centimeters, you can end up with four centimeters here and here. And it's going to keep it away from the image receptor and you're much, much less likely to um, make a hole in the other side of the breast. Um, so I got some breast of chicken from my local supermarket to demonstrate this because I didn't really want to be having a patient compression and taking photographs of them, but I think it will show it quite right. So we have here, we've got our, our thin chicken breast, and this is a couple of centimeters thick. It's compressed between the standoff pad here, and here's that plexiglass that attaches it on, and the normal biopsy compression paddle. And you can see what's happening is that breast tissue, breast, well, well I guess it is breast tissue, is um, bulging through here, making a thicker area of breast. Now, as you can imagine, um, the challenges with this might be that it may push away from you when you're putting that needle in if you're not careful. And um, it may um, make subtle abnormalities not so easy to see. However, it's a very thin breast, so usually you can see subtle abnormalities um, pretty well, but just to be aware of that. We have on occasions put a piece of tegaderm um, on top of this paddle so that there is less bulging through the hole, but usually that's not needed. So we're set up here to take our biopsy. We've taken our 2D image, and this is our, our 3D Tomo image for targeting. Um, and these are just some antacid tablets I've stuffed in the middle of this um, piece of ch chicken breast. Now, when you look at the screen here, Hologic is saying, yay, everything looks good, because it doesn't know this distance here. So it knows that it's 12.7 centimeters from the receptor, it, but really it doesn't know how far it is from the breast tissue itself. So that's something, unfortunately, that this number here is not gonna help you in this situation. You're gonna have to do it more by eye. So here we are, we've targeted on these coordinates and we've placed the needle down to the tip um, being at the target, target coordinates. So everything's reading 000 on the screen and we're ready to go to deploy the needle. When you deploy the needle, you can sometimes see the back of the breast um, sort of bouncing a little bit. If you look through the standoff device, I've never had it go through. If you're nervous about it, you can pull it back a little bit, then fire it and advance it slowly. All right, go. Okay, and then let's look, see the chamber is nice and below. At this point, you just want to take a look and see if your biopsy chamber is below the skin surface. If it isn't, you can wind it in a little bit. And I'm also going to show you a trick in the next few slides of how um, we can use a skin hook to help us. So this is how it should look at this moment with the star being the lesion we're going for in the middle of this breast. The chamber should be completely within the breast. And I have found that I can use a standard size needle in the vast majority of these thin breasts, even when I use a standoff pad. Just occasionally I have to go down and use a petite um, because of the problems of undersampling. So if your chamber is up and above the breast here when you've deployed it, you can gently wind it in a little bit to get below the surface, or you can use a skin hook. So this is just something that comes from our you know, surgical instrument department. And you just take the sterile skin hook um, after you've deployed the needle, but before you do the biopsies, and you hook it into the skin at the edge of the excision, you pull it up along the shaft of the needle, and you twist it a little bit. That's what this is supposed to show. Um, to just maintain the vacuum. When the problems with biopsies that are very superficial and kind of by definition, they're gonna be superficial in a very thin breast is the vacuum might not be very good. They can kind of suck air in from outside. They make a noise like a, you know, 
a straw at the bottom of a glass. And if you're doing that, it's not sucking the breast tissue in very well. So to maintain vacuum, we're going to pull it up, the skin up, and just give it a little twist so it's tight against the shaft of the needle. I forgot to take a close-up picture of that when I was uh, doing the demo in the department, but just to sort of give you an idea, this is what you're doing. You're just twisting that um, skin against the edge of the needle, um, and it just makes a nice tight seal. You may have realized that this is actually a very good technique for doing superficial lesions, even in a thicker breast. Um, again, the two things I do there is I wind the needle in a little bit further, and I will use a skin hook just to pull the skin away from the biopsy chamber so I don't biopsy it and twist it to just tighten that vacuum. And you can see here how I've just hooked that um, skin hook into the skin, uh, skin of the chicken breast and I'm just pulling it up towards the shaft of the needle as I twist it. And at this point, you're just gonna go on and do your biopsy as usual. You just keep a very close eye on that incision site and a close eye on the needle and just make sure that it's not sucking any skin down and that you have an adequate vacuum. If you don't, then just tighten that little twist. And ta-da, completely successful biopsy, tons and tons of, quote, calcifications in my chicken breast and no trauma to the patient. Hope that helps. Happy to answer any questions.